Today I'm going to show you how to create your own fine art landscape photography images. And don't forget to stay until the end just to make sure you've fully understood what it is I'm telling you in this tutorial. The first thing that I want to tell you about fine art landscape photography is the light. When it comes to light, there's no bad light. Although, obviously, it's not pouring down with rain, that would be the ideal circumstances, but really, light is always going to be crucial in your fine art landscape photography images. So bear that in mind before you go out. Make sure that you look at the light before you go anywhere and you attempt to create any type of fine art landscape photography image. The weather is the next thing you need to think about when creating your fine art landscape photography images. If it's blue sky, then just don't go anywhere. Stay at home and wait. Wait for weather like this. I've been waiting days, days to get the weather like this that I just needed weather like this in order to create my fine art images. Look at it. I mean, it's just perfect to create fine art landscape photography. If the weather isn't like this, it's just not going to work. So make sure that you come out and it's completely overcast, completely gray and dismal before you create your fine art landscape photography images. Gear is the next thing we need to talk about. Make sure you've got a good sturdy tripod because you'll see why actually in the next section when I talk about exposure. Make sure you can put your camera in manual mode and ideally, if you can, in bulb mode. You'll see why, as I said, in the next section when I talk about exposure. The last thing on your shopping list for creating fine art landscape photography images is a 10-stop filter. If you haven't got one, Go and get one. Go max out your credit card right now because otherwise your fine art landscape photography images are not going to work at all. So, who can you get 10 stop filters from? There's Lee, there's Benro, there's Nissi, and whoever else. I can't remember all the names right now, high tech, but if you haven't got a 10 stop, get out there, go onto the internet, go and find one, new or used. Make sure you get one though, but make sure it's in a nice tin like this, because it will keep it nice and safe because it's made of glass. The next thing we need to talk about is exposure time. Exposure is, of course, very important when it comes to fine art landscape photography. Now, if you don't have a minimum exposure time of 15 seconds, and this is where your 10 stop comes in, a six stop, just don't even bother. You need that 10 stop or even a 15. If you haven't got a 15 second exposure as a base minimum, then it's not going to be considered fine art landscape photography. You cannot have anything less than 15 seconds. I cannot emphasize this enough. So 15 seconds is probably a good base time to be starting about. And then you can consider yourself the amateur side of the fine art landscape photography world. The fine art landscape photography world, I should say. But 15 minutes, you get up to 15 minutes or so, then we're getting to mastery of fine art landscape photography. Because at this end, 15 minutes, eight, 15 minutes, we are there. We are on that tipping edge of being masters of fine art landscape photography. No talk about fine art landscape photography would be complete without a talk about aperture. Now what aperture am I going to be using today? Well I'm going to use f8 just because my subject is actually quite far away. However if I had some really nice foreground interest I'd be using the widest lens possible and I'd be using the hyperfocal distance to get to f22 because I'd want everything in focus from front to back, making sure that all of the things are there, my hyperfocal distance and f22. So think very carefully about your aperture as well when you're doing your fine art landscape photography. Now ISO does play an important part in your fine art landscape photography images. Do you go ISO 50, 100, or even say 1600 or 3200? I think that depends on what type of fine art landscape photographer you are. Me, personally, I 
personally prefer having a nice clean image to work with. I prefer around ISO 100, the native ISO of your camera. But if you want to go 1600 and if you want to get it looking really sparkly and very, very, very grainy and moody, then fill your boots. But personally, my own choice is ISO 100. So there you go, a less serious side to some of the photography that I do and a more, I guess, maybe a little bit of a dig at the fine art landscape photography world that's out there. Has it been serious today? Well, I suppose in some respects, maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of the time I see this stuff on YouTube and I just think, is this really fine art or is it just a long exposure you've converted to black and white, added in, tons of contrast and you go there you go it's fine art is it make your own minds up i'm going to get my picture i found this place actually a few weeks ago and i looked at it and thought actually it's perfect for this particular humorous insight to the photography that i do until the next one wherever that may be stay safe wherever you are don't forget to click on subscribe down there and the notification bell up there for the next vlog, wherever it may be, somewhere, I guess, in France, depending on the weather. Maybe I'll have even better fine art landscape photography weather than I've got right now. I love more form in the cloud, but hey, that's me. Anyway, stay safe. See you again soon. Until the next one. Bye. Thank you.